Greetings and welcome back to Gothic Homemaking, where I show you what all of the big stores are offering this Halloween season. And as always, there's a focus on finding items that are dark and macabre and elegant enough for people like you and me to use to decorate our Gothic lairs year-round. Now, recently I've gotten a lot of emails from people asking me to review Spirit Halloween. To be brutally frank, I didn't see the point of it because I thought they only sold Halloween costumes there. But recently, a friend of mine sent me a link to the Spirit Halloween website, and I see that they have a line called Gothic Noir. And many of you have written in and told me that you've seen some of these home decor items in their stores. So I thought, maybe it is time to check out Spirit Halloween after all. So I visited a couple of New York City locations, but none of them had home decor at all. So I thought, it might just be time to venture outside of New York City and travel to Jacksonville, Florida to an enormous Spirit Halloween store. Take a look. When I say this location was enormous, I mean it was really huge. It must have been a Walmart before it was a Spirit, and it was full of surprises. Unsurprisingly, it was of course full of costumes, which you'd expect from a Spirit Halloween store, but I was really intrigued by this section, Victorian Vampire, and I wondered if some of these accessories and some of these costumes couldn't be used year-round. I mean, some of them do look cool enough to wear to the local goth club, like this number. It might be worth making a video about that. What do you think? Well, enough clowning around. I was there to look for home decor, and I wasn't going to be scared away by anything or anyone. I did find a bunch of skeletons, but none of them were realistic enough for year-round use in the lair. And out of these skulls, maybe that middle one would work if I painted it black. I found some tombstones, and I got excited, but none of them were really gonna work in the lair. And then, in the gate section, I found these. Now, I've had success with some of these things in the past. These could really work if you paint them black and give them some silver leaf. Now, I continued my quest through the store until I finally found a section labeled Home Decor. At first glance, the items that I saw were way too Halloween-y for my taste. And overall, everything seemed very colorful. And then I found these cushions, and I got excited. That is, until I realized that they were basically Hocus Pocus memorabilia. The other half of the home decor section was completely Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. And while someday I hope to be the king of Halloween, and I love Nightmare Before Christmas, I really don't want my lair to look like it was decorated by Hot Topic. I did find another aisle of things that looked closer to the kind of stuff you might find at a Michael's or a Joann's. Like for instance, this black creeper vine. Or this Halloween reef. And honestly, about as close as it got to dark elegance was this pumpkin. There was another section completely dedicated to psychic themed things, and there I found this burlap wall hanging that I thought could really work. There was also this valance which, at least, inside of the package looks really nice. And there was this tablecloth for when you're ready to invite the Illuminati over for lunch. Then I found this raven tablecloth that's starting to get closer to the mark. And then I got super excited when I saw the word gothic next to the word noir and this design. It's black, it's white, it's red, it's got spider webs. And then I noticed that the blanket itself is super colorful. Like, what happened? Did this come back from the factory and nobody corrected it? I felt similarly about this Ouija board design. Like, the color is just too saturated for my taste. And that theme prevailed throughout the day. Although this pot holder is closer to the mark. This welcome mat is nice, but I made so many Ouija board themed things three years ago on Gothic Homemaking that I think I'm ready to wave goodbye to the entire Ouija board motif. Next, I found this Gothic Noir lamp, which also seemed to be very colorful. And since there wasn't one on display, I couldn't actually see what the lamp looked like. Now, here's an item we've seen at Michael's and at Joann's, but unlike the other two stores, it actually didn't have a hole in it, so it can't be used as a vase. They had some Day of the Dead decorations, which is a motif that's usually too colorful for me. Though I think I could make use of these black and white plates in a pitch. Now here's an item I saw on their website, and I was excited to see it in the store. Now I love the pattern, and I think that in black and gray this would really work. But I hate to say it, but in red and white it just reminds me of a tablecloth my Cuban abuela had in her kitchen. It just really feels like a lost opportunity. 
These kitchen towels were too colorful for me. Though this is a design I can really get behind. So I did buy some of those. So all in all, I didn't really lose my head over their home decor section. And unfortunately, I found myself saying no to most of the things I found there. On the way out though, I did find these miniature artificial bones. And I think these are really gonna come in handy in a future DIY project. So stay tuned for that. Now completely by chance, when I returned to New York City, I just happened to be strolling through Chelsea and I passed a Spirit Halloween store. And while it was nowhere near as big as the one in Jacksonville, Florida, it too had home decor. Take a look. I walked into the Chelsea location and was instantly greeted by this jolly fellow. And hey, they were giving out free hugs. I thought to myself, this is my kind of hang. They had more skeletons than at the other location, but still none realistic enough for the lair. However, in the railing section, I did find this plastic railing which, if painted black, I think could really be used. Now getting back to the costumes being used as daily wear, the steampunk section was rather large and I thought had a lot of items that could be worn daily, like pretty much all of these goggles, and possibly this top hat. What do you guys think? Would you wear this top hat to, say, a steampunk convention? Now, I don't know about these gothic men's clothes, per se, but in the women's costume section, there were some costumes that had accessories and elements that I think would look fantastic out in the real world, like these blood-splattered striped stockings. And this cat suit, presuming that it's made well, I think would look great out on the dance floor. And in the naughty nun section, I found this, I may have purchased those stockings for my fiance. Kiki? Reel it in, Count Rinkula. Seriously though, Spirit has all manner of Halloween costumes, including this suit that only a clown would wear. <laughs> hey, take that back, jerk face. Well, I finally found the home decor section, and there I found Hocus Pocus glassware and Hocus Pocus salt and pepper shakers and Hocus Pocus towels. And the other half of the section was nothing but Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. There's nothing more suspicious than Nightmare Before Christmas home decor. I take that back. They also had Freddy Krueger home decor, like this fleece blanket, a trick or treat blanket, and come on, seriously, who wants to snuggle up with a creepy clown? Hey, I resemble that remark. Neat set. They had other blankets that weren't from licensed properties, but I found them, once again, to be too colorful for my taste. When I'm decorating, I don't want my home to look like it belongs to an enthusiast of horror or goth aesthetics or steampunk. I want it to look like an actual haunted castle. And to that end, this piece works rather well. Case in point, the welcome mat on the right seems like it would be in a haunted mansion. Well, I was welcomed out of the store by this crazy fellow and a leaping scarecrow, and a cackling grim reaper. And believe me, some of these monsters are really quite large and quite terrifying. And I'm not gonna lie, though this is super Halloween-y, if I had the room, I would totally buy this Cerebus and have it guarding the lair of Voltaire. In short, when it comes to home decor, Spirit Halloween's offerings basically fall into one of two categories. It's either basically memorabilia from big entertainment licenses like Nightmare Before Christmas, Hocus Pocus, etc., or the items are just too colorful to really live up to the name Gothic Noir. Now, Spirit is just getting into the home decor game, I think, and I believe that they're gonna be a brand to watch in the years to come. I personally am really rooting for that Gothic Noir line. Now, when it comes to giant animatronic monsters, spirit cannot be beat. So if you're turning your lair into a haunt to terrify the neighborhood children, they have got you covered. And of course, you can always find fairly inexpensive Halloween costumes at a spirit location near you. Hey, Orville, you know what I'm doing for Halloween? <laughs> no, fool, I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. Any questions? Sí, muchas.